The wing, of course, is one of the most essential parts of the airplane. It is a light structure considering its size, and its motion through the air must be controlled. Note its erratic flight as it falls. The body, or in this case the stick, is important. We fasten the wing on the stick so the center of weight and center of pressure of the air action are at the same point. To see what effect this has, let's drop it. One factor of control has been established, the relation of center of air pressure to center of weight. If we try to make a glide, you will see it doesn't know quite which way to go. More control is required. Another essential part is the horizontal tail surface, just a small wing which we fasten to the tail. Having added weight aft, we must move the wing back to keep our first control factor constant. Testing the model in a glide, we see that longitudinal control has been established. Note it turned to the left. The wings are bent up on purpose. This angle is called dihedral and makes the wing stable laterally to keep it from slipping to one side. You might say, makes it fly in a groove. For directional control, a rudder is required. We place it at the tail, adjusted to make the plane turn right. Weight again has been added, so we move the wing back to keep our weight and center of lift relation constant. The center of weight is located at approximately the 30% point on the wing cord. We glide it, and it does go to the right. We have thus established all the essential features, wing for lift, stick for location, horizontal tail, and rudder for control. All it needs now is power. In this model, the rubber band motor, when wound, turns the propeller. It is complete in all essentials and should fly. Let's see if it will. Yes, and it does a very good job of it. Design of the various parts determine the type of flyer we will produce. In nature and in mechanical flight, there are many types of flyers. Each is designed to perform a specific job. The size of the wing, its shape, and the power of the engines are the main controlling factors. These army bombers are good examples of the weight carriers. Their four 1,200 horsepower engines will speed them along at 250 miles per hour. The large wing enables them to carry huge loads of bombs for thousands of miles without stopping. A commercial clipper plane takes off. It carries 42 passengers plus a crew of 10 and several thousand pounds of mail and express. They must carry lots of weight to make them commercially practical. These types are now flying on regular schedule across both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. They are the modern clippers, clipper ships of the air and they carry the United States flag to the far corners of the earth. For long distance non-stop flights, the endurance type is used. This Navy PBY flying patrol boat is noted for its long range and great endurance. In formation, groups of them have flown from San Diego to the Hawaiian Islands. There goes one bouncing off the water for some far distant shore. Notice the great span of the wing, a typical characteristic of wings built for endurance flying. Equipped with landing gear, the flying boat becomes an amphibian and can land on water or on the ground. The wheels can be retracted or pulled into the hull. Note the wells for the wheels on the side of the hull. Howard Hughes made this endurance flyer from a commercial type of plane. This is the plane he used on his famous three-day round-the-world flight. This modern pusher is a fast attack bomber. Its two powerful engines push it along faster than 300 miles per hour. 
Modern pursuit planes combine speed with acrobatic characteristics. They are designed with relatively little wing and a great amount of power. Their short, stubby wings allow for extreme maneuverability. Here is a group of pursuit planes typical of the acrobatic type. They must be able to do all the tricks and fly, dives, loops, spins and rolls. Notice their short, stubby wings. These planes have power enough to climb with great speed and maneuver rapidly. Takeoff in formation is common. Gets more planes into the air faster. Slow roll is a difficult maneuver. It takes lots of practice and skill. In making one turn, the pilot has to reverse his controls four times. Now, let's dive back to our models. Here, too, we have many types and varieties. This fuselage model is like the weight carrier. It is rather heavy and has a large wing. Also, a lot of power in its rubber band motor. Will it fly? Certainly. Let's try it. A nice flight and a perfect comeback. The endurance model is much larger and of very light construction. In fact, it weighs less than one ounce. long, narrow wing with short cord gives it a high aspect ratio. The propeller and rubber band are designed to make it fly slowly and for a long time. Models like this will stay in the air for many minutes. Follow its flight, but don't twist your neck too much. Anyone can build a model like this, providing he starts with simple ones, and gradually develops the required skill and technique. Round and round it goes. The propeller turns very slowly so that it will not use up the turns of rubber too rapidly. Being perfectly trained, it comes back all safe and ready for another flight. Here is a model that would do justice to a Roscoe Turner. It's a speedy little number. The wings are short and stubby. The motor, strong and powerful. Keep your eye on it as we let it go for a short flight. We won't bother to get it back now. Let's look at still another type, the acrobat. This little fellow knows all the stunts. Loops, spins, spirals, and dives are its specialty. And it's full of surprises. Each flight is a test flight. I wonder what it'll do this time. A loop, another one, more than a spiral, and right back for more. Some fun. Will it do it again? You see, models are more than mere toys. With them we have demonstrated why and how the airplane flies.